Anybody come see the green show? Get a rope ball, triple loops and roll. Everybody come see the green show. Get a rope ball, triple loops and roll. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sales Show with Mark. For over 10 years, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Let's welcome your hosts, Blake, Sal, and Mark. Now, Red Solo Cup is the best receptive room for barbecues, tailgates, fairs, and festivals. And you, sir, do not have a pair of testicles if you prefer drinking from glass. Hey, Red Solo Cup is cheap and disposable. In 14 years, they are decomposable. And unlike my home, they are not foreclosable. Freddie Mac can kiss my ass. Red Solo Cup. I fill you up. Let's have a party. Let's have a party. I love you, Red Solo Cup. I lift you up. Proceed to party. Proceed to party. Now, I really love how you. Oh, welcome to the Black and South Show with Mark. Episode number 495. And I am one of your hosts, Blake. And I swear, this week has been fucking crazy. And I'm so happy to be behind this microphone because this is kind of the most relaxed I am when I'm sitting behind this microphone during chaos. So I am really happy to be here. Let me bring on my co-host, first of all. The biggest heel in podcast. The man who I will be seeing literally less than about 24 hours after this episode drops. <laughs> and we're going to the stadium series. Oh my god, I'm excited! The biggest of podcast, thanks, Sal. How you doing? I am wonderful. How are you? Oh, things considered, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All things considered, I'm good. <laughs> but stadium series, I can't believe it. It's actually happened. It's only here. It's finally here. I know. I know. That's uh, it's uh. It was a very long, uh, what, four months that we had to wait? <laughs> At least. And we've been talking about this for like a year on top of it all. So, like, <laughs> oh, that's true, too. Yeah. They, they, they dropped hints about this a year ago. So, like, when I was in Jersey last February, they dropped hints about this game. <laughs> so, like, yay. I'm so happy. So, let's bring on our other co host, the man of legend, our wrestling historian, and a man who really was attached to the two people that we're going to be talking about who died this past week or so. Dad, how you doing? Doing great. I'm glad both you gentlemen are just in that type of mood. Uh, let's just say that 2024 kind of started off a little quiet, but all of a sudden now there's been big roars and bangs. So uh, we'll write it out. <laughs> oh, give me that kind of show, and I love it. <laughs> So, um, I didn't ask anybody for music choices this week because I knew we wanted we were going to open with Toby, and we we're going to close with the song I wanted to play with to play for obvious reasons this week. But opening up a little bit, of Toby Keith. I'm like, I need to show up tempo. Let's go rest solo cup. Everyone, this song was all over the place this past week. So there you go. I figured supposedly it was oh. there's a story behind the song and that he was drinking a lot and wrote a song. No, well, no. <laughs> He was in with his band, and they couldn't figure out they needed another song to put on the CD. And someone came up with the idea, and it only took him 10 minutes to write it. And it literally turned out to be one of his biggest hits of all time. There you <laughs> no go. Figure. No figure. Funny how that works, right? Yeah. Well, I read the story. Um, I think it's Rent. And right over the Rent. I watched a bunch of, during the pandemic, they did a bunch of Broadway Cares events. And I and one of them had to do with the anniversary of Rent. And um, there was a story about Jonathan Larson. Where he had this idea for this for one of the most popular songs in the show, he did not. He came up with it and wrote it in the theater with the girls in front of him. In twenty five minutes, that song would take me or leave me. Oh, <laughs> damn! Okay. So yeah, he wrote that in twenty minutes with the girls in front of him in the theater. <laughs> so <laughs> that's about, yeah, no, no, no pressure, right? Yeah, like well, he, it was. He just came, a song came to mind and he wrote it down and. Sometimes that's how it works, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's that's the beauty of some of these songs. 
these some of these artists are just amazing for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so let's get some plugs out of the way. First of all, before I even get to the stuff written down here, um, so a funny moment. I'm listening to the Carla Marie and Anthony Morning Show on Monday morning. Yes, yeah, this is Super Bowl. As I always do when I'm working, nothing major. And all of a sudden, they cut the two second tunes. And I hear, I hear, in my, it's like, you know, sometimes, Sal, you hear something and pop your head up like, wait, what did I just hear? Wait, what? Yes. I heard, I heard the words jock jams. I'm like, wait. <laughs> They're not redoing it again. So this past Monday, if you didn't hear it, well, um, they replayed me and Sal's um, two second tunes again for the third time. This past Monday, it was our, it was our two second tunes jock jams edition. One of the, I, we had so much fun doing that last year. So this is the third time they played it now, and I, I guarantee it was because of the day of the Super Bowl. And they're like, we have this Jock Jam one, and it's really entertaining and a fun one. So let's play it again. <laughs> so if we get paid royalties every time it gets played? I wish. That would be awesome. That'd be so I, was awesome. Gonna, I was about to ask that same question. I would love that. But it, it was really funny. I heard Jock Jam, but it literally stopped, and I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I wonder if anyone around me noticed. I literally stopped in my tracks. Like, wait, what? <laughs> so, I had to make sure I plugged that here. All right. Um, as always, check out Mandy's book. I know I am available right now in an Amazon Barnes and Noble and RJ Publishing. I didn't notice I still changed the color. Uh, <laughs> you mean you color code everything else? You don't color code that. <laughs> I've never caught that. That's very funny. I never did that. You're right. Mm-hmm. Um, available wow. in English and in Spanish. Um, so that's that. And also. Klingon. The, uh, right before this show, we'll go listen to the newest episode of the Nadine and Mandy show with special guest, me. <laughs> I'm on their show oh. this week. Um, okay. So I guested on their show this week and go listen to that. It was actually a lot of fun. But the main reason I did that um, was because I didn't want to have to have a 45-minute conversation on this show. <laughs> that's, that's not our style on doing anything on this show mm-hmm. um, about my issues. But I will address them here right here at the top of the show. If you want more details, go listen to the Nina and Mandy show because we've had like a good, like almost 45 minute conversation about it. But um, we were off for a couple of weeks. We had a pre recorded show and then we um, had an archive show up to take a little break. And during that little hiatus, I had a uh, colonoscopy and it came back that I had a colon cancer. Um, stage one, stage two. We don't know all the details yet, but I have surgery in a couple of weeks. Um, and I'll be pretty much home for six weeks after that. I'll leave and I'll be here and I'll be around. I'll still be doing my podcast and everything else. I'll still be around. But um, that's going And if on. he thought he watched a lot of wrestling before. Dude, I have a list of movies to catch up on now. I have TV shows to catch up on. I have wrestling shows that happen. And on the February, there's certain matches I want to see that I have. I'm, I'm saving for this. Of course, WrestleMania week, there's going to be a lot of wrestling going on. Like, I have a so because I'm literally going to be in my bed pretty much for two weeks, not be able to do a whole lot. So I have a list. <laughs> I have a list. <laughs> um, I just found out about a documentary about Real the World, which I'm interested in. It's on Netflix. I just found out about that. Yeah. The Scuds podcast. They talked about that. I'm like, I'm going to watch that. That's something yeah. interesting. Okay. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a little thing like that. Like, I now have the time to watch a little silly documentary that I would never have the time to watch. So, <laughs> yeah, might as well. That's that. Um, my boss is hilarious, though. He's like, my boss, to his credit, is doing everything in his power to make it easy on me so they don't bother me during my leave. Mm-hmm. And he said to me last week, he joked with me, he's like, you know what, I realized something? You get to skip the rest of the winter. <laughs> you don't have to go out. Yeah, I don't have to go out the rest of the winter because I have one more week and then I'm off the road until April. <laughs> so like the day after WrestleMania, I'm off the road. So I'm going to skip the rest of the winter. <laughs> nice. So that's that. But that adjusts but that that adjusts the podcast though. I have to address the address the podcast side of things. First of all, mm-hmm. next week. Um, I don't know how this show is gonna go. I honestly don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I have the lanyard mics, Sal, right here in my hand. Brand new lanyard uh-huh. mics. Brand new. I haven't used them yet. Nice. And I will test them out. I'll be at the airport before my flight on Saturday. Make uh-huh. sure it's working properly. But we will do we will be doing recordings from the stadium. Series, I zero what this is gonna go. Um, we're gonna be on the tailgates. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna be there all day. It's gonna be a great day. I'm so looking forward to this. Um, if people want to find us, at the moment, it looks like we're gonna be hanging out mostly in um in in the parking lot M2, which is where Let's Go Devils podcast is having their big tailgate party. Uh-huh. Um, so if people want to find us, go there. 
<laughs> so next week's podcast will be us at the stadiums here. Um, live coverage. I don't know what we're going to do. Also, I want to make a quick announcement here. Look for a video after we get back. I'm sure I get back. Of a big announcement for me and Sal having to do with our 500th show. So look for that after I get back. Uh, hey. Week after. Week after. Um, is AW Revolution preview show. I hear the problem. I'm going to be in the hospital. I'm going to be in the hospital. <laughs> so I can't do the show. Sal is going to be in New York seeing Harry Potter. So. Yes. And that was Tickets planned. I bought for Christmas. Yeah. That was planned way before my issues happened. Like, I have the funny part about these weird things. Like, this is way before. So. In our, in our place, we're not. This is the first show that we're not going to be on. Like, one of us is not going to be here. Like, sounds weird. One of us is not right. going to be here. But that's taking over the show for that week. <laughs> And John and John Parker from Bat Minute will be here with him, and they're going to preview AEW Revolution. <laughs> nice. You guys are gonna be in trouble. So that's gonna be a show that happens. And in the week after, here's the funny part. So back in January during Wrestle Kingdom, I was sitting here planning out a couple of months because I wanted to get to our final just show on a certain date. And oh. I I had planned archive shows just to have some days off. Just behind the scenes, come just so I can hear our final on a certain date. Well, that archive show I had planned just so happens to be the week after surgery. So there's an archive oh. show going up, so we're going to be off. So we'll be back. We'll be back together finally the week after. <laughs> so it'll be about a month before the two of us, all three of us, are back together behind these microphones again. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. It doesn't make a difference. We're going to have some fun after that. But just let me Schedule is going to be weird over the next month. Weirder than I originally planned. Right. <laughs> it was originally going to be weird anyway, but now it's even weirder. So, wow. Because in the background, I'm I'm trying to bank a bunch of first minute episodes in a couple of weeks, so I don't have as much work to do in March. Like, I'm trying to get all this extra work done. So I don't have to do as much in March. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. Let's get on to the actual show. Um. So, how I did this this time, this week, Instead of like jumping from sports to wrestling and all the kind of stuff, I kind of went in order, not order of events, but in order of kind of like, we'll jump around subject matters, we'll go to this, that, and the other thing, and then we'll get out of here. So less reliant on the soundboard and more reliant on having a conversation. Um, first things first, we'll talk about a couple of people that passed away. What it's very strange, Sal, to have somebody pass away of a of someone that me and Dad went to see at Fan Expo a couple of years ago. Yeah, we had it. We, it was our first panel of the day. Um, if you go to the um, biggest house show at the con, biggest house at the con speed, you can listen to that panel. It was our first panel of the day, and then Dad went to go meet him. It was Carl Weathers. Yeah, who um, passed away at age seventy six, um, from a, a um orthostopic cardio cardiovascular disease. I have no idea what that means, but that's what it written down. Um, I, I'm not I'm not the medical person, despite the fact that I've been in the hospital more in the last a couple of weeks than I have in, in maybe about twenty years. Um, <laughs> um, so that's that. I, I don't have too much personally, except damn what the hell. I love his character in Mandalorian, so I'm very sad he's not going to be continuing on. Yeah. With the movie coming up. Um, yeah. I hope to get around that because they have it's a massive plot point that they have to figure out now. Mandalorian <laughs> having to do with him, so I'm hoping they figure that out. But um, other than that, I really don't have a whole lot. Um, Sal, any thoughts? I know Dad has a lot, so any thoughts? Um, no. Uh. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry. Fair enough. That's, that's no. Absolutely. I'm the same boat. I'm in the weirdly same boat. Dad, go ahead. You know, I'm hoping that they are able to bank footage of, of Carl um, during the Mandalorian series so that way they can utilize it for the movie because he, his character, to me, is essential in the story. And without his character... You're missing a good part of the story in the Mandalorian. They're having the same problem on Ahsoka. Keep in mind they're having the same problem on Ahsoka. So, um, Carl Withers, uh, this man um, jumped into stardom in the Rocky series as Apollo Creed and uh, made a big name for himself that way and then made a movie, Action Jackson, which was somewhat successful and then got rediscovered. Later on, um, in life, uh, did uh, was it Happy Madison? Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chubb, 
Yeah, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. That's it. Happy, Happy Gilmore. Gilmore. Happy Madison's yes. the studio. Yeah, yes. that's okay. I know. I know that Happy Madison, but no, hey, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chubb with the wooden hand. A hilarious character. Absolutely yeah. hilarious. And then the recently the Mandalorian, and when we went to the panel, and the man is, is soft spoken, gentle. I mean, it, it and very detailed in things. And when someone asked him what his greatest achievement was. And people would think it would be, you know, gain discovered in, in Rocky or other things. But to this man's credit, he said the bit, greatest achievement in my life are, are my sons. Thank and you. it just showed me how of a family man he is and the emotion that came out. Um, and then when I got to, to meet him and I asked him, you know, um, he had this really um, different type of bracelet that was made for him by a fan in New Mexico. And it had the turquoise in there and, and everything. And it was very great. And he said, yeah, he got this from a fan. And since he's got it, he's never taken it off. And he appreciates everything he gets from the fans and the interaction. You know, uh, whether it's positive feedback or negative feedback, you know, whatever helps him to better himself and in acting or in life. So there you go. Uh, he, um, he, the, the spot, the Super Bowl commercial. Oh yeah, for, yeah. That was a cool moment. I didn't expect that. That was a cool yeah, moment. Yeah. Yeah. Him in the Super Bowl commercial. Um yeah. I, I have to actually find the photo of you and him and I'll, I'll put it on the I'll put it on the graphic for today's show so people can see that graphic. So okay. I'll find a picture. Um moving on. We got winners. We got losers. Chain smokers and boozers. And we got yuppies. So this one surprised the hell out of me. Did not see it coming. Um, it popped up because I, I it's kind of one of those things that was in the it was kind of apparently a big public thing, but nobody knew. Weird. Weird how that worked out. We lost Toby Keith. Um, age sixty two to stomach cancer. Um, it was weird how that came out right after I but right after everything was done with me. But um yeah, this one hit a little bit to everybody. This one kinda of hit everybody a little harder than I think anyone expected. Um Super Keys is the big for those who don't really know who are Hannah Rock or just not in the country music, how big of a star Toby Keys truly is, like it was or how we want to word it. Um, we're playing a lot of this bar in the background. And there were so many songs with Keys, but I really didn't want to go too depressing with the song choices for today's show. So I went up tempo. Um, and this is a big one. Um, it's sad, and the funny part is with our show, it hits music, country, hits wrestling, hits everything, every little bit of thing. Wow. It's really crazy with Toby Keith the connections we have. Like, there's a whole bunch of clips going around of he was on the first ever TNA after TNA wrestling show back in 2008. He was? Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was. He, um, he was in the first ever TNA wrestling show. He, um, came out, he performed courtesy of the red, white, and blue. Um, got attacked by Jeff Jarrett. And then he hit the <laughs> with the guitar in a battle royal. That happened. <laughs> that happened. Okay. Okay. And I was like, okay. <laughs> didn't didn't uh, Toby pick him up and give him a body slam yep. on the ring? And eliminated him from a battle royal. It was one of the weirdest <laughs> things ever, but it happened. That happened. <laughs> Wonderful. So all that went down. But no, Toby's a legend. Absolute fucking legend, Dom Stell. Yeah. Um, and. Uh... I didn't realize he was in his 60s. <laughs> no! That's no, Ruby! <laughs> he didn't look it. That's the whole no, thing. No, not at all. It. Not at all. Uh, but yeah, no, big loss. Big loss. Um, but his music will live on. Well, it's funny that I took the, the song. I went, I, the album I actually took the um, I Love This Bar is off the Toby Keith's 35 biggest hits. And I, I'm trying to figure out what year this came out, because it's definitely not a recent album. It's not a no, recent I, I want to say that's at least 10 years old. Two, uh, longer. 2008. Let's not think about 2008. Damn. <laughs> Damn. It was a two-good set back in 2008. I was off by six years. Right? But still, like, <laughs> wow, that's a long time ago. Like, it's really crazy how long that is. <laughs> but, um, yeah, go ahead. I don't know. Take it this way. Um, that's the QC David board. Yep. 
<laughs> so here you go, Dad. This man started out with country music and kind of made some little splashes and went on his label. And then when he wanted to really do the music he wanted to do and the label kind of went, no, we're not going to let you do it. You're going to do this. This is a man that basically went out, created his own label, Big Dog Records, and made the music that he wanted to do that not his, that his label wouldn't let him do. And yep. succeeded where other people thought he would fail and fall flat in his face. And I kudos to the man that basically stood up for himself. Maverick got other artists under his new label. Uh, flourished, survived, went to all these country music um, fan fests. Played with other artists, uh, crossed over, uh, and I think everyone remembers him for Courtesy of Red, White, and Blue because that was like a shot in the arm for patriotism, and everyone rallied around that song, and that song is going to be forever embellished in American history and in everyone's mind. Uh, for that boost of patriotism he did with that song. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all about that. And then I heard a story about that song recently that apparently he wasn't going to release it. He wasn't going to release it. Yeah, he wasn't. And he played it for, um, I forgot what he played it for. And they said, that is the most patriotic thing I've ever heard. You have to release this song. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why it was released, because he was told it was the most patriotic thing he ever they ever heard. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's and uh, he, he, when he thought he beat stomach cancer and he came back to work limited for a limited time, everyone said he looked, you know, he looked good. He sounded good. You know, he was in good spirits. And I think the last person he played with as far as an artist was Jason L. Dean. And that was when he was in Vegas. That makes sense. So, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, I do want to get one thing out of the way. We're not going to get into full details. If you want full detail, go to news sites. Go to the wrestling news sites that are actually covering this over and over again. Or just go follow Nick Hoffman on Twitter, because apparently he can't stop talking about it. Um, <laughs> love the guy, but, oh, my God. I, I, I literally had to fast forward through his podcast last week, because I was so sick and tired. Um, Big Man resigned as WWE president and from TKO under federal sex trafficking charges. That is sentence. That is what happened. He's literally under federal federal investigation right now. Mm -hmm. So is John Laurinaitis. Um, mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar currently is being scrubbed from the records. I don't want to get into details. I really don't want to. It's not my thing. Um, I'm maybe honest with you. I didn't even read the freaking um the whole thing. I didn't read the whole um report. I didn't read it. The whole Wall Street Journal. Mandy read it. I read details. I didn't read it. I've heard enough details. I don't need to know more. It's um what it is. Uh, it's it's it sucks for them, not for us. Because wrestling, our wrestling program and WWE program has been fantastic since he left and went to um and they merged the company. I don't really care either way. I'm actually happy he's gone. Um, anyone have any quick thoughts? Don't have to get the details. Don't have to go into crazy thoughts. Anyone have anything quick they want to say before we move on? Yeah, what happened years before. Yeah, yeah, yep. ba Basically, and there's more females that are coming out. And all the stories seem to collaborate. So do yep. the math. It is what it is. Um, and like I said, that'll be pretty much all we talk about on here. Because I'm not, I, we're not a news site. We're not a news yeah. show. It's not our thing. It's not ever been our thing. We're not going to get into it more. It's just not something we need to talk about. On all the details are very disgusting. And it's like very perturbed and very dark. And it's like, nah. Yeah. I as, as, as Rich Fan said on one of his shows, you never know who's listening. I don't want to get into details on this show. We 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 have a lot of fun on here. We're a explicit show, but even yeah. I draw a line no. somewhere. No. Even no. I draw a line. No. So, um, so that's that. So let's get into more fun stuff. So by the way, I don't know what's going on with Sal. He's probably working or something, but it looks like he's going through like a manuscript. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. No, this, this is so damn funny because all I see is you 
turning pages on my way page looking like a fucking manuscript. It's gonna be so funny. I'm uh I'm looking at the uh the new script for the new Fantastic Four movie that was just announced. Got it. Okay. I thought it was, it was the script for the next year's NFL. Wait, wait, is so that with John like, Krasowski? Oh, I figured it was I figured it was a script for next NFL season. So we know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> no, that that, that the, drops uh, next month. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> actually the way that Sal is shuffling papers reminds me of uh, watching like the, the daily nightly news on NBC. Would <laughs> no, no, no. it's not that. It's not even that. It's when you make fun of the nightly news. Like remember, 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 remember last year, a couple of years ago, we were actually one of my favorite photos. I still have saved of me when we were um we had power issues and we still did the show over Zoom and we had yeah. like, we were on thing and I like I had a background. It looked like I was like and I had and I had to print out our run sheet. Because I, I want to stay powder and powder, and I had papers in front of me, and I was sort of making fun of it. I was like, shut up, with papers. That's exactly what that reminds me of. And now let's go to the news. <laughs> it's literally one of my favorite photos for, for like the podcast because it's so damn hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, so you may have heard a football game happen this past Sunday. Um, really? are we not allowed to say it still? No, no, it's Super Bowl. It was Super Bowl. I, I'm just joking. Oh. Um, I mean, it was the most watched game, or well, the most watched television event ever. Literally, the most watched ever. Television ever. Next to the moon, the only thing that topped it apparently was the moon landing. That's it. <laughs> Legitimately, the moon landing is the only thing in the history of the United States that was watched more than this Sunday Super Bowl. <laughs> there was a hundred thousand people that lived back then. Oh, 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 oh the. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, yeah. So the, the final numbers, by the way, a hundred and so on CBS, one hundred and twenty million people watched the show. Watched it on CBS alone, alone. And you add in Nickelodeon and all the other platforms, Paramount Plus, everything. Um, it was one hundred and twenty-three point four million. And at certain points of the game, according to this graphic, more than two hundred million people. Watch all or part of the Super Bowl across all networks throughout the night. Oh, damn. Which is ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> that is absolutely. Yeah. And that came straight from CBS. So, like, I'm not even like, this is not like it's a fault. This came straight from CBS Sports. So, like, that is unreal. Um, yeah. Kansas City, they repeated. And um, they won twenty five to twenty two in overtime, in the most confusing overtime rules of all time. Um, <laughs> I just don't understand why they have to make it so complicated. Just do a straight up fifteen minute quarter, and whoever has the most points at the end of fifteen minutes wins. So as I was, so I, the funny part is, can I say something? I I, I really enjoy Tony Roma at times, at times. Yes. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to explaining rules. He is terrible. He is so bad at this. Jim Nance is doing his damnness, but Tony Romo is terrible at this. <sighs> Tiki Barber, the next day on Derek and Tiki, explained this so much better than Tony Romo ever did. Pretty much, <laughs> the rule is, the rules are, both teams get a possession. No matter what happens, both teams get one possession. If, for instance, the first overtime ended, and Kansas City's possession still hasn't ended, we're going to the next quarter like it would be the second quarter. That's how it would work. But, if it's, uh, uh, but it, like, say it was tied. Three, three, it, I mean, both teams got a field goal. Tied, mm-hmm. right? Would have been next score wins, no matter what happened. It would have been next score right. wins. But both teams get a possession, no matter what happened. That's the only thing they did not explain that well on the broadcast, <laughs> right? Because yeah. didn't the old rule used to be that if you are the first possession team and you score a touchdown, that's, the regular, that's the regular season. That's the regular season rule. That's regular season. And in the playoffs, it used to be first score. Wins. <laughs> no, no, no. In the playoffs, <laughs> no, 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 no. Explain a bit. In the playoffs, it used to be first score wins, no matter what. And then a lot of people complained about that because both teams wouldn't get the ball and a chance to win the game. So then they added right. overtime rule in the regular season, and they added that to the play, they, and they changed it in the playoffs to only make it fair enough to both teams get the ball. And I understand the logic; I get it. Like I understand yeah. why they did it, but they had to explain it better. <laughs> they really had to explain it better on the show, on the actual game. And here's the best part: if you thought Tony Romo was confused, and all the rest of us were confused, it doesn't take much. You know who didn't know the rules? 
and this is the funniest part for me. The San Francisco 49ers players did not know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that they... is not a joke or an exaggeration. That came from them. Oh. The players directly. <laughs> they didn't know the rules. <laughs> because when they thought they scored Whoops. the three, they thought that they won the game. Or they used regular season logic. Mm-hmm. Or, touch, or like field goal touchdown logic. They used the same logic that Sal just said. They used oh. regular season logic. And I understand. Because for NHL fans, they had different overtime rules in the playoffs in the regular season because well, at least they're more straightforward. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, though, but like every sport, like I think Tiki Barber also explained, like soccer, it, they have different playoffs. Like in the World Cup, they have different rules than in regular soccer. Like they yeah. have different rules. Like fine, if you're gonna do that, absolutely. That is, I have no problem with it. The problem is when the first game under these new rules is literally the biggest game of the year. Yeah, I need a better way to explain it. <laughs> well, I mean, what do you what do you expect from Tony Romo? Where this is a man that listen, well, listen. He was excited. It was his first time at the Super Bowl. Uh-uh. No, that's the no, joke. No, that's no, the joke. No. I think this is the second Super Bowl. Well, I'll be here all week. Actually, Sal, I, think this, I think this is his second Super Bowl of the broadcast team, but I, I like your joke though. The joke is still funny. The joke is still very funny. <laughs> this, is, this, this is this is a man that when you ask him a simple question, can't figure out what the answer is, so he's I, gonna bullshit. No, my favorite part of watching the game is so like some of my bosses. Oh, did I say that out loud? Oh, 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 I have coworkers. I have coworkers like that. But um, trust me, I talked to one of them today. Um, great guy. But oh my god, it didn't answer the question. But anyway. Um, don't really have a 25 conversation of a two second answer. Don't need to do that. Um, anyway, <laughs> anywho, um, funny part about okay, so we were so me and Mandy went to go see. Um, so okay, so I've been getting a lot of shit for this, and I'm gonna say it on the air. We talked about it on the Mandy Man show, but I'll say it here. Okay, we did not look at the date of the Super Bowl when we made our anniversary plans. We did not look at the date. We, we went to see Jersey Boys in the round at the Fireside Theater, front row seats on Sunday afternoon. For matinee tickets, we stayed overnight, completely isolated ourselves from the world for a night. It was great. Absolutely fantastic. Completely isolated ourselves. Like, I was, we didn't even touch our phones for most of the night. We literally isolated ourselves, watched TV, and chilled all night. So, Sunday, so, I think, mean, but we bought the tickets back in September. We bought the tickets in September because we wanted to make sure we got good tickets. We didn't think about the Super Bowl at the time. So, then, like, two weeks, like, two weeks ago, I'm like, honey, do you know the Super Bowl is on our anniversary this year? It's like, Nope, not <laughs> realize it. So literally, we left the left the um left the show, stopped to get some caffeine for the drive home. There's an hour drive home from where we were going, and we watched the end of the pregame pregame and the anthems into almost the kickoff on the drive home. <laughs> on the drive home on Paramount Plus, as you do. That is a sentence I never thought I'd say in my life, but that's what we ended up doing. <laughs> that we ended up doing because I trusted Paramount Plus more than YouTube TV because we were in a different area and we were having trouble getting some of our shows on YouTube TV to work on the Roku as it was. So I didn't trust that it would work on the drive. <laughs> so I just went with Paramount Plus and it was fantastic. So when we got home and we're watching the game straight through, my hair part of Andy watching the game with her, and she doesn't have issues with Tony Romo personally, this is the point of this, is she doesn't, we don't watch a lot of TBS because most of you watch Fox. Packers are on Fox, the Giants are on Fox. We don't watch a lot of TBS. Right. And then the games that CBS lets them are watching are not the A team. It's usually the B team. So, at one point in the third quarter, in the middle of a play, Tony Romo starts playing with the Madden straight. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, with no context whatsoever, he starts playing with the Madden trainer. And all of a sudden, Joe's like, Who the hell gave him that? Why is he using that? <laughs> Who gave him the ability to use that thing? <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was so funny. I thought they boxed it up. Oh my god, it was so. I'm on CBS. I'm on CBS. He was on Fox. It was. So, we just called the manager because that's what it is. But it it was so damn hysterical that she just went off about the manager. Why is he using that? Why is he using that? But do you know, it's every time there was something that involved rules or some sort of penalty, and Romo didn't get a clarification, the other guy was going. Well, let's t- let's toss it over to our uh, guy, Gene. Gene, can you explain guy. this? And I'm going, man. If you really want to make Tony Romo like a dumbass, you just did a great. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you know 
that in case of power outages at a stadium, especially after what happened back in the 2020, 2019, whatever the year that was, that the power went out at the stadium. In case that and ever the shield came out. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, remember that? Oh, remember, remember that? Remember that the Super Bowl where the power went out? In case that ever happens again, apparently, back at the CBS studio, they have a backup announce team just in case something happens. Mm-hmm. What? Well, they, they, for real, they have a backup announce team in the CBS studios in New York. Mm-hmm. Just in case something happens at the stadium, is it a power outage or like something happened with the cable? Set? That, obviously, it never happens. But in case it happens, yep. they have a backup team in New York just in case they need it. And the only I know that is because Tiki Barber talked about it on the on the radio show the next day. That's where he was watching Super Bowl but in the CBS studios on a massive screen in case there was a power outage and they had to go to them as the second team. <laughs> what did you play by play? But, hey, did if Tiki there's a power the outage, then there. If there was a power outage, though, that means they wouldn't be I know. a I know. show. But it's yeah. always interesting that they have that backup plan just in case something happens. It's really funny to me. <laughs> did, did Tiki mention who the, the backup guys were? It was, it was whoever the second team is. I think it's him, Matt Ryan, and I forgot the other guy that did the second team. I can't remember who the oh. uh, other is. They first announced that. It's Matt Ryan, Tiki Barber, and I forgot who the third, first guy is. I forgot who that guy is. But that's the team. Yeah. I, I think it would have been a better choice, but that's just me. But personally. yeah, that's what the, I, trust me, I would have loved it personally. I would have loved it. Um, so anyway, real fast, halftime show thoughts. I loved it. Uh, sure. Uh, I was lukewarm. You also don't know the music. <laughs> you don't know the music. <laughs> I knew like three songs. In my defense, I only knew like the second half of the music. I personally like the minute Alicia Keys came on, and after that, I knew everything. But like before that, I was so lost. <laughs> but um I, I i've got a bit i gotta give usher a lot of props here not only did he do multiple outfit changes throughout the performance and what was it 15 minutes he did multiple outfit changes mm-hmm. at all career i'm still trying to figure out how the blue hell he pulled off in 20 in 20 seconds to put do an outfit change and put roller skates on <laughs> I have no idea how he did that in 20 seconds. He's either slip on roller skates that have straps. But still, he didn't bust his <laughs> like those Fisher Price ones. <laughs> there you go. I'm like, so by the way, there were legitimate injuries on this dish. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently somebody was on fell off one of the poles. Apparently, as the fifty, you set me out, and then, yes. uh, and then a girl literally skated off the set. <laughs> off the set. I, I have to find a video of that one. I, 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 I would love to see I that one. So apparently, they were allowed to put the video up on the YouTube, on the TikTok page that this person was talking. She might get in trouble with CBS, obviously, for the video up. But apparently, she skated off the set, hit the ground, busted up her arm, and had a black eye. Ouch. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Insane. I will admit, though, much like everybody in the world, when Yeah hits, he pop. That's just the thing that happens. And when Yeah hits, and, little, John, and little John comes out, <laughs> he kind of pops. It's just awesome. Yeah. Did you Did you guys know that the artist gets paid zero dollars to perform at the Super Bowl? Yeah, I actually did hear that. He actually yeah. talked about that. I should talk about. I that. didn't know that, and I, I was reading about it actually this morning, and I. Just, I think that's wild. <laughs> but it's so, free promotion. It's free promotion. So I remember last year, what it is. Somebody said well, Rihanna when her album came out after Super Bowl, it was like one of her it was literally her highest like her highest yeah. album ever because of her Super Bowl appearance. Yeah. So like well, does, promotion. Does, well, Usher's got his show in Vegas, and I think that's what well, he has a new about. album coming out too, I heard. I heard he has yeah. a new album coming out too. So like yeah, I mean, did did Usher also channel his inner like Mariah Carey with all those costume changes? What the uh, f- did, f- he his shirt off? He, he pulled off it. He 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 pulled it out of the and took a shirt off in the middle of the performance. Like it was, it was a bizarre, crazy. Okay, I will say though, people are calling it one of the best like halftime shows ever. No, it no was, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. No. People literally praising it as one of the best halftime shows ever. I'm like, no, it was not. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it was fun, but it wasn't one of the best. Like, let's just be honest here with everybody. I, uh, I, well, I, I, I like I, Lady Gaga and Pink's better, but that's just me. I, I enjoy. I, I, I will go back and watch the Shakira freaking J Lo one any day. Just being oh here. hell yeah! Oh, yeah. Here. Nothing to do with the music. I just want to watch them dancing it. Oh, oh and, and, and guys, we have to congratulate Usher because after he did his little halftime thing, he also got married. Oh yeah, that happened. Yeah. You got a little, I was like, what the hell? What a bizarre thing to do. Like, what is so Vegas? That's the biggest thing to do. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Mike, did, did, cool. did he did he go to the little white chapel in Vegas? I don't know. It was very funny. Or did he I go mean, to the cookie to, right? drive-through? <laughs> who, are, who are they? Who are who is that? Um, Triple H and, and Stephanie and freaking uh, Matt should ever going to a drive-through wedding? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. So do you oh, no. to be? Yes, I do. You really um, did mention that, didn't you? It yes, happened. Did. It happened. Yeah. It happened. <laughs> uh, what are I going to say? There was one more thing. So, because I have to address this real quickly. Okay. Then we're talking about over on the name manager because of um, Nadine's love for Taylor Swift. They did the math. And if you take out the post game because of it's obviously celebration for Kelsey, whatever, take that out. Mm-hmm. She was only on the entire game broadcast. She was only on for nine and a half minutes. The whole game. Yeah, people like Sal were complaining about it every single time. <laughs> she time. doesn't belong on the goddamn TV screen. Damn, fuck, Taylor okay. fuck Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. There Thank we you. go. So I just wanted to and, and, that. <laughs> and, and the other thing that people were wondering about. That Let's see who Sal hated today. There you go. Thank you. That, that people were kind of upset about is that Travis did not propose to Taylor. He was not going oh, to. God. He wasn't come going on. to. People were miffed come because of, but this would be the big, the greatest time to propose. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I don't hate them as much as Sal does. I actually don't mind their relationship. I think it's adorable. Oh, but there is no way in hell he was going to propose at the winning Super Bowl. And, that and, was and, going and, to happen. Like, and, it wasn't going to happen. Okay, so, I mean, for it's the just people how fucking that stupid people, people it, are. For people that are upset about it, I'm common sense kicking like, yeah, okay, so basically, sense. you're gonna force this man to propose. Yeah, I, I, think they're, I think they're so cute. I think they're adorable. I think they're really yeah. Cool. I mean, but just, like, just no way let them no. let them be themselves, and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, let them be themselves without fucking television cameras on them. How about that? I, okay, you know what? I do agree with that. I think if I think I do agree with that to a point. One other thing, my favorite video that came out of the post game. And everyone knows my love for Jason Kelsey right now. By the way, Jason Kelsey, and I said this over on the uh, over when I was doing the other show last night. I hate the fact, as a Giants fan, that I like Jason Kelsey. <laughs> I hate the fact that I like him as a person. Like I hate it so much. That's like that's like me. That's like my love for Gritty. <laughs> I hate the fact that I like him so much as a person. But my favorite video came on after the game the next morning. I'm looking through stuff online. My favorite video. There was an after party video. Of Taylor and Travis dancing. Fine, whatever. Being a cute little couple. And then you span to the right. <laughs> pan to the right. And there's Jason Kelsey on the stage with Marshmallow jumping up behind the Lucha mask. <laughs> that was a funny video that I saw all weekend. It was so damn funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, that was Jason. Really funny. I do have their podcast. I have not listened to the podcast this week yet, but apparently they, they did like a mega long show this week, obviously. <laughs> Super Bowl, you deserve. You could do a long podcast after the Super Bowl. Jay, I don't Jay, blame them for it. I'm, I'm sorry, Jason Kelsey is very entertaining, yeah. and it just shows how much that he has love for his family and his brother. Yeah. That basically he he's not a sour grape type of person. It's like, hey, if my brother's going to succeed and my brother's going to do this, you know, I'm going to show. Hey, I'm behind him and support him 100. percent All right, so real quick, real fast. I don't have anything in my personal notes here, but any commercials from the week from the Super Bowl that right now, a couple of days later, you remember. I honestly, I was just thinking about it. Like, I know there was at least three that I really enjoyed. I can't even remember what they were. That, that's a problem. That is a problem this year. By the way, the one commercial that I can bring up only because so I, I, I get I get my breakfast from Dunkin' Donuts when I'm on the road. It's easier for me. And um, so I went to Dunkin' Donuts this morning get my get my um my breakfast, and on the screen. Behind them, they're playing the entire commercial for the Super Bowl behind them, but not the sound on. Which I'm like, I'm so well, glad. I mean, the yeah, they spent off. a lot of money on it. But like, I was so glad <laughs> the sound is off because the employees would probably be going fucking crazy if the sound wasn't off right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I thought it was cute, but not really funny. I thought it was funny for what it was, but what they were trying to do, I thought it was funny. But like, it was well, too much, really. <laughs> I mean, when we get your buddy Matt Damon and you get Mark Wahlberg in there and your in your wife. Oh, Tom Brady. Was Tom Brady was in there too. Tom Brady was in there too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, of course. That's who caught Jennifer's eye. It was Tom. It was just so funny. It was Tom, funny. Tom, you can stay. 
it was a funny commercial. I, Dad, any thoughts, anything? Because I honestly can't remember a whole lot personally. I it's, think the one that, that I really hit, remember. <laughs> the, the one I hit the most was the Homes.com one. They just overplayed all those little snippets, and it would it, it just got... It, it was beyond silly. It was stupid. Fair enough. Um, I can't remember anything. The problem is my brain has been... I'm so tired this week. That is well, like, I know that we, we both complained about how much money they spent on those Jesus ones. Oh, God, the like... Jesus commercials! The Jesus commercials! So somebody, by the way, there was a bunch of... Oh my God, the videos for this. Like TikTok, people were complaining about this later. Apparently there was three different Jesus commercials and it was $7 million a commercial. <laughs> what? But Come the one, on! The one I liked is the one where you have people washing other people's feet. No, that was terrible. It was stupid. I'm sorry. No, I, I hate, like that one. I hate the Jesus commercials. I think they're stupid. Like, I absolutely hate them. But the fact that it was $21 million from whoever the hell paying for these commercials. <laughs> like, come on. Come on. I, I could have fed a lot of homeless people with that money. I agree. I 100% agree with you. By the way, I, the one I, I, I now remember the one commercial that annoyed me, mainly because it was a jingle and it was stupid and I, mean, I kind of hate the website so much. The team, the team commercials drove me fucking crazy. Oh, yeah, that too. Drove me nuts. Like, what the what, hell? What commercial? Timu. Those commercials oh. are crazy like or, or you can, you you can... how the blue hole did you afford four commercials that's number one <laughs> we're basically you can shop like a billionaire i hate i, I don't like timu as it is i think timu is overrated yeah and it crappy is. website to begin with and uh i don't oh, hot take i'm all aware hot take but um i know how much <laughs> I, love it. I try not to talk about that in front of him but like i hate the website personally but um i don't know how they make I money do. honestly i don't have no idea how they make money like, i have zero clue how they make money Neither all the people that 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 like Kyle that buy it into but, the, but the, the prices are so low. I have zero how they make money. Like I have zero. But, uh, but here's the thing: how they afford to first... commercials? I have no idea. When you first <laughs> sign up and you want to buy something, that's where you get the low prices. But when you do a second purchase, it's at their full price. It's not at the reduced price. Oh, that's stupid. All right, let's move on. So, let's move on. Yeah. Um, what's up over to some wrestling stuff? Um, so. Since we last left you, since we last <laughs> left you, we left you right before the Royal Rumble. No, right before the Royal Rumble. Um, actually, I'm going to say this before we even get to the um the big drama. Yay, Bailey won! I'm so happy. I'm so damn happy. <laughs> I'm still ecstatic. Bailey won. Damage control. Damage, she left damage control. Turn on EO Sky. The moment on SmackDown, one of my favorite moments so far of the year, because so much she revealed she could speak Japanese, and they were like, oh. <laughs> yes, it was. It was a great. Ba, 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 um. It was a great. It was one of those. And the crowd reaction was my favorite moment when she said something <laughs> And before she even continued, thought the whole crowd realized what was going on. It was a great moment. Like it was a fantastic <laughs> moment. So when, all, when she all credit, when, it was great. Wait, does she, does she when, really know Japanese, or is she just yeah, like she so Japanese? She knows so Japanese. Let's see. Oh, so Japanese. <laughs> so I mean, every time you had the Kota Kai as the interpreter, basically Bailey knew it was bullshit. Yeah, exactly. She does legitimately know Japanese. She she wrestled in Japan at one time. Like, she yeah. does know Japanese. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, when I mean, when she came out with it, the arena was so silent. Oh, it was great. It was a great moment. So yeah, it was. Bailey versus Eos happening at WrestleMania, and I cannot be happier. Because that also guarantees 100 percent she'll be at my show in March. 100 percent guarantee. Because we're at the last um, we're at the last SmackDown before WrestleMania weekend. So like I'm so damn excited. So that being said, that but I had to bring that up. So let's get to this. I literally wrote this down in order of events. Boy. Then I'm gonna read them all off, and then I'm gonna let you guys go at it and have some fun with this and you give your thoughts. I'm just gonna read this out exactly how it went down since we last left you. Since we last left you on the show because our last new show was our hockey show. So here we go. Cody wins the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Cody Rhodes wins the Royal Rumble. Fuck Cody Rhodes. For the second year in a row. He calls out Roman Reigns on the broadcast before the show goes off the air. And then we find out CM Punk gets injured. <laughs> on the Rock. On the raw, no, exactly. On the raw after the rumble, Seth confronts Cody. Says he would rather he rather he go after his title instead of Roman's title. Which I thought was weird at, the, at that time. I thought it was weird. Um, SmackDown. Cody then in the main event segment gives his match to The Rock, <laughs> which makes absolutely no sense at the time. Um. So then, when that happens, the minute that happens, 
everyone goes fucking crazy online. Everybody goes nuts. As and, they do. Um, and hashtag we want Cody, we want Cody friends for three days. Um, not gonna bullshit you. I did not want to see. I you, everyone knows my feelings on Rock versus Roman on this show. We talked about it in the past. I don't think this should be the main event for WrestleMania. We talked about that. But so I, I, I was kind of supportive of it, but I don't tweet anymore. So I didn't participate in the hashtag. Um, <laughs> then Monday, we addressed this on Raw. And they pretty much changed the story that Cody did not give the story. <laughs> the thing to Rock. And it, it, it started sounding like that Rock used his power behind the scenes, which is the truth. Which is the absolute truth that Rock used his power behind the scenes to get this main event. And they put that on television. I don't believe on, it. No, Rock actually, no, legitimately. Rock actually, when he became bo- on board member, actually had in his contract that he wanted to be in the main event against Roman. I don't believe it. So that's that's that one. So they addressed that on the show, and then the crowd chanted "Rocky suck," which is not gonna lie, made me laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect to hear that in 2024. Um, <laughs> so then they announced there's gonna be a press conference on Thursday. I say press conference because it wasn't a press conference, <laughs> and the press was invited. And then nothing happened with the press. Um, <laughs> legitimately, the press wasn't invited to like the press conference, but the press that showed up were then reimbursed for their flights because it wasn't actually a press conference. That's the truth. Um, <laughs> so in Vegas, they have what they call the kickoff event, which, by the way, I will say, go anyway to watch the segment between, um, the, between, the, between the four of them because it was actually absolutely fantastic television. I will say that. Kickoff event. Um, Rock, the, uh, Seth comes out to do his thing to call out Cody. So you can set their match in place. Roman comes out. The crowd goes crazy because it's Roman Reigns. And Seth and Roman have a little back and forth. Roman just said, then says that Cody no longer gets to choose his main event. The tribal chief gets to choose his main event. And you hear Seth in the back. I'm like, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. <laughs> Which is true. It's not how it works. The Royal Rumble winner is the main event. That's the point. So, Rock then said, so Roman says, I'm facing the Rock in the main event of WrestleMania. Rock comes out, the crowd starts booing. Like, I am, like, Rock was completely shocked by the crowd's reaction to him. He comes out, the crowd starts booing. And the best part is, on, on the screen behind them, is a massive graphic promoting Rock versus Roman behind them. <laughs> massive graphic. <laughs> so then they have this. And then Rock starts talking. The, and the crowd starts wanting him. And much in professional, then he goes with the what chance, which made me laugh. And then he puts up the most obnoxious graphic I've ever seen. Putting up the family tree of the Samoa United States yep. <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> One of the most obnoxious things I've ever seen. But again, I want it, I do want that blown up so I can break it down because it really was really cool. But at the, at the moment, in the moment, it was really obnoxious. Mm-hmm. Puts it up on the <laughs> break it down. But my favorite part, if you zoom in on the rock, it says um he is the tribal chief on the on the freaking on, on this on this on the family tree it says he's a tribal chief on the, on the thing. <laughs> so that was pretty damn funny. Um that's a, that was not addressed yet. I'm waiting for that to be addressed eventually. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to be addressed. So while they, they shake hands, confirming their main event for WrestleMania. And then Cody walks out with a microphone, no theme music, and says, this is bullshit. <laughs> oh my God, that's what he said. It was bleep, but it was so damn funny. <laughs> and they, um, they, they held this whole thing, and Cody then says, I am picking Roman in the main event for WrestleMania. Keep in mind, keep in mind, the background graphic still says Rock Roman on the set. <laughs> the graphic still says Rock Roman on the set. So he calls out Roman. Seth is in the background of all this, by the way. Keep that in mind. Seth's still on the stage during all of this. He yeah. then looks at Ro- and then Ro- Roman says, um, says something about Dusty. And that sets off Cody. <laughs> like you do. You know, easy way to get in the coach. <laughs> Didn't mess him down. I'll give shit to both people on this. I'll give shit to all parties on this one. If you want to say something about Cody, you say something about his dad. <laughs> It makes sense. <laughs> so then, Cody goes and says to Roman and to Rock, straight up, your grandfathers would be ashamed of you to their faces. <laughs> <laughs> this pisses off the Rock, and the Rock slaps Cody. <laughs> the place goes crazy. <laughs> um, that, that, and that, uh, 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 keep in mind, the setup is, is Rock is now aligned with Roman. For this whole segment now. Rock is aligned with Roman. But the He's line that the Rock delivered was when you insult his family, you insult my family. Yes, that's what he said. So he slaps Cody. Everyone goes absolutely crazy. The crowd's going nuts. The crowd, by the way, to their credit, about a couple thousand people in Vegas, they're going crazy for all of this. To their credit. The crowd involvement for this made it even better than I'm even describing because the crowd was amazing during this. So 
they have the, they have a pull apart like at the fucking UFC thing. They have a pull apart <laughs> like at the UFC um, event. And all of a sudden, Seth, Seth tried to break them up like you do. And then Adam Pierce and Nick all just came out to break them up. It was out. <laughs> and the Woods comes out to help break them up because they're backstage. Well, they addressed them. They addressed Adam Pierce earlier in the show. So that's why he was there. And I figured Nick, if that was there, Nick's got to be there. So they came out to break this fight up. And Seth looks at The Rock. And I swear he says this. You can't do whatever. You can't, you can't go around doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Oh. And Rock responds with, I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. That's exactly what he says. <laughs> and they go on and they pull Cody off the stage. Meanwhile, but then I forgot to leave out, is there is a um there was a panel up on the other other side of the arena, and it was Michael Cole, Pat McAfee, CM Punk, and Big E. Yep. <laughs> Just because they wanted to get CM Punk something to do, and Big E's probably bored. So bring him in and have some fun. So the four of them were doing this panel. Apparently nobody clued them in on what was gonna happen. Let me clue that. You know what's going to happen? So they're reacting like we're reacting. They're reacting like we are. Where Big E's confused. Big E's completely confused. He drops Nick Khan's name, which cracked me up. He's like, but he's friends with Nick Khan. <laughs> yeah. Nick Khan, which cracked me up. And then he goes like, well, what if we do both matches? What if what if we do both matches at WrestleMania? What if we have a tag match? What if we do this? What if they do that? And then Punk's like, if I was if I was um Cody, I would have slapped him. I would have punched him in the face. And Punk says, I, I don't see a problem with punching my boss in the face. I'm like, did you say that, Paul? Yep. Did you really say that? Did it, didn't that, that just <laughs> happen a few months ago though? And now he got a wide broadcast. He said this. Yes. He is confused because he's friends with the rocks. So he's he was on the other. Cole was trying to tie all this together. By the way, Punk says this. Rock's still on the stage. Yeah. And Rock gives him a death glare from the stage. Doing <laughs> that thing. And then CM later says, I, I would have knocked his teeth down his throat. So, now, so all of a sudden, Cole's trying to wrangle everything back together and get everyone back on the same page. And suddenly the graphic on the big screen changes to Roman Cody. <laughs> In the middle of all this. The graphic changes. <laughs> and everyone backstage. So they cut backstage. To Jackie Rainman talking to Triple H. Paul, sorry, Paul Triple H's effect. I mean, he's now being called on television. Yes. And um, she, she goes and asks him what's going on. And he says, we, um, we'll we address this. We'll get to figure this out. And all of a sudden, Rock walks by with Roman and looks at Triple H and says, you're going to let him talk about my fucking family? You're, this is all police, by the way, but we knew exactly. But let me put up an authentic version of this. You're going to talk about my fucking family. Fix this, or we're gonna fucking fix this. And he walks away. Yeah. So many go, and that's how we went off the air of this. We go to SmackDown. Michael Cole, literally, the old, Michael Cole, um, Corey Graves, and Wade Barrett, by the way, the new announced team on SmackDown. They um open up SmackDown and address it immediately, saying, "This is the main event of WrestleMania." For those who are confused, it could have be Cody Roman. <laughs> that is what's happening. Um, so um, that happened on SmackDown, and then on the following Raw, Seth actually goes and says. Cody, I'm. I'll be on your. I'll be. I'm. Um, uh, despite our issues, I'm going to be at. I'm going to be on your side at WrestleMania to help you with the help you with interference from the bloodline. Fine. Roman and Rock will be on SmackDown this week to address things. I also forgot they put together a commercial that everyone's on the Super Bowl, where literally it's promoting WrestleMania, and it was all four of them in the commercial, which confused everybody because now they don't even know what the hell is going on anymore. Tell your thoughts on all of this ridiculous chaos that's gone on in the last two weeks. <laughs> so. Um, kudos to WWE for caving to the peer pressure of the online internet wrestling community. Um, but you just totally royally fucked your show because <laughs> the fact that you just did all that and just tried to, you know, make nice with, you know, your little, the little fanboys on the internet that or, well, were, were, I, were crying and moaning about it. You know what, though, in all seriousness, Al, I understand what you're saying. I completely understand what you're saying, 100%. But at the same time, how many people were the people on the internet? I'm not one of them, because I think what happened on the, uh, happened that weekend was insane and uncalled for. A lot of it was uncalled for. Like, there was people threatening Ava's life, Ava Rain's, um, Simone, um, Simone um, Johnson's life. I think that's a joke. I think that stuff is shameful, and I don't think you should do that. So I am not right. in support of that. What I'm in support of is the people in the crowd on SmackDown and on Raw who were booming rock. So you kind right. of address those people. So if you're going to address those people, they want the main event change too. 
So if you want to take out the internet, take out all the stupidity on the internet, and you just go by what's on television, you had a risk of the crowd turning on the main event at Mania. So, that's so be it. I'm just saying. So that's be it. it. So, so be it. What did did Triple H come out on SmackDown or was it Raw that clarified things? SmackDown. It was on SmackDown this past week. And if I remember right, he mentioned that, you know, as he's explaining things that, well, sometimes some people just let their power go to their head and figure they can do anything they want and run the company the way they want when it's when they just came on the board. And that's not the case. Oh, he never said the board. He said, I don't care what seat you sit in. I'm the one in charge of the TV show. Right. That's what his words were. I don't care. Right. What, he addressed both Roman and Rock in that segment. Right. <laughs> right. And then he basically came out and says, and, you know, we're, you know, we, we, as he put it, we catered to the WWE universe, and this is what the WWE universe wants. And that's when he basically solidified and said, and it's Cody against Roman for WrestleMania. Okay. And so the crowd went question. nuts. I have a question now. Not over here. The main yeah. event for WrestleMania, they're not going to change it again. They can't change it again. The crowd's going to no. go crazy. So, and, and there were also the other thing. <laughs> so stupid. I'm sorry. The other factor you have to throw in there we have the chamber happening, and Seth and Seth's opponent is going to be decided at the chamber. And I'm just going to say out here, if we're not going to be previewing that show, I'm saying Drew McIntyre is winning the chamber. Um, yes. And it's going to be Drew, probably Drew versus Seth at WrestleMania. Right. The Rock's going to have to be on this show somewhere. Like at this point, Rock's got to be on this show somewhere now because he's promoted he's going to be wrestling on this show. Do you have a tag match at the end of night one, Rock Roman versus Seth and Cody? You know what they should do? Go ahead. Because I'm still believing. That Roman's going to hang on to that title for one more year. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, I, I don't still believe, believe it. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't give a. F- I don't give a fuck what anyone says. That's fine. So what they should have done to really ease this whole peer pressure situation, they should have had Roman do both nights. Fight I the Rock on night one. Fight Cody Rhodes on night two. I like that idea. I'm not gonna lie, well, I like that idea. Big Biggie on the kickoff, and they kind of alluded to that possibility. But I don't know if what it's if it's going to come to fruition or not. I, if it if it has to do with money, they have the money to pay Roman for two nights. Um, I I, I this is my feeling, and this is going to be the end of Roman's reign. No pun intended. But if it's not, if it's not, if it's not, then if Cody loses again, then I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But part of it, I I'm I'm in a camp where. I'm rooting on Cody Rhodes. I personally am. I like Cody. You know I like him. But, but for television purposes, I think it'd be hilarious if Roman won. Like, yes. I think that would be I hilarious. Say, all of this shit. <laughs> a big fuck you to everyone would be for him to lose again after this whole debacle. Yeah, like it would be hilarious if that happened. Don't get me wrong. It would be very, very funny. I don't personally want it to happen, but it would be hysterical television if it did happen. Like, it would be hysterical television. And then I will come out and I will say, y'all made them change the plans and he had a guaranteed world title on that day because obviously Seth is going to have to drop it just for him to lose again. Oh, that's crazy. It's not and my, and my nether regions will be tingling with sensation. But my mm-hmm. my thing in all this is now that Rock has basically said and there's the title for your show. <laughs> <laughs> that, there you go. The tingling in your lines. <laughs> Is that I'm writing that down your video? <laughs> Rock has said that you know he's the head of the table, and Roman gives him this funny look. So now you have family conflict. How does that get resolved? The match at WrestleMania on night one. <laughs> no, but I mean, is this something that is going to cause a division on family lines where you're gonna have you know, like solo side with the rock and Jimmy's side with Roman. No one you match them. I, and then you know what you do? You have a bloodline civil war. But it, oh wait, we did that already. We did that already. Wait. <laughs> wait minute, why can't we have a bloodline cage match? Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, well of a bloodline civil war in the UK. And, and money, wait, we did that last year. Um and, and so, okay, I'm gonna throw the, special res- the special guest referee, Rakishi. No. I'm going to throw out an idea. No. I have, I have okay. a theory. I have a theory. 
All right. But it all depends on Rock movie schedule. Keep in mind, everything I'm saying has to really has to do with Rock movie schedule. Yes. Um. By the way, before I even say this, I cracked up laughing when Seth on Monday goes and says, "Um, you're welcome." I cracked up laughing. I did not expect that. That made me laugh. <laughs> but I don't know, Seth. I'm sorry. Were you up for Becky's promo later in the show? You ever met Rebecca's promo? You're gonna rob the if you're up for it or not? I heard. I heard she said something, but I don't remember. She goes. She goes into this whole thing. It was actually a really good promo for Becky, talking about how she is, how um, their how their, their daughter is young, and she has to just address like why some why her why her she can't pick up her daughter because she had to separate his shoulder, or why she comes home sometimes and she had like like black eyes on her face and bloody after matches, and then she goes and and they have to explain why her father wants to fight Maui. <laughs> I <laughs> racked up laughing at that line. That was very, very okay. Yeah, that's funny. That was a good line. But anyway, so this all depends on Rock's movie schedule. So my theory is, you do the tag match on night one, a mania. You do Cody Roman on night two, title change, whatever. Well, why can't you just do the tag match at the chamber? Because um, Roman's not going to be at the chamber. Oh. He's, 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 he's not going to be at the chamber. But they would have been having announced that already. They would, have, they would have probably already announced that. <laughs> to be quite honest here. You know what they should do? Oh, wait, but it was, it was my theory. So what you do is, you announce, because I've heard rumors that SummerSlam is going to be at AT&T Stadium. I'd be hearing that oh. rumor. It's going to be at AT&T okay. Stadium. That's where you do Rock Roman, title or not. You do that in the main event at AT&T Stadium. At SummerSlam, the biggest SummerSlam event ever. You do the main event for the title or not. If the title's on the line, then you've already passed up. You're getting close to Roe Hogan's number. And then you have that whole storyline. If you don't have the title, you still have the family history and the main eventing the biggest show in the world. Sal, what were you going to say? I'm going to say what they should do at Chamber is have Rock versus Cody. And then the winner gets the right to go against Roman at WrestleMania. That's not a, actually not a terrible idea, honestly. And you can actually then culminate on the weird rock Cody situation at the end of this um whole thing of the slap and everything. Right. <laughs> so the slap was amazing. The crowd, the crowd reaction to that slap made the entire thing for me. That was absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so that's that. We'll talk about it more when we come back and come back after who knows? By the time we come back in the middle of March, we may have another entire story li- timeline we have to talk about because who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll get fast again. We're not doing a full chamber preview, obviously, because of uh, the stadium series next week. Um, Rhea Ripley's opponent and Seth Rollins', Seth Rollins opponent will be announced at the cha- will be revealed at the chamber. It's super obvious it's going to be Becky and Drew at this point. Am I right? Sure. Pretty much. Well, the funny part is, Sal, you didn't watch the um, kickoff thing. They already spoiled the main event of the chamber for us. They already told us Becky's winning. They already told us. Because Ow. Rhea comes out to talk about stuff, and Becky confronted her, and you have the photo right there of the two of them standing up against each other in Vegas. They already spoiled it for us. Yo! <laughs> they, did yes. they did that! They did that! No! <laughs> yes. Wow. Keep in mind, Rhea defended the title. At the chamber against Naya, and you have the chamber match. You already spoiled both of those matches. You <laughs> did that. <laughs> what? What? I mean, it was pretty obvious Naya wasn't going to win, but. This is funny. They already spoiled two of those matches for the next pay per view. Next week's pay per view at this kickoff <laughs> last week. <laughs> oh. Wow. Wow. Who's the bo- wow. who's the bonehead that screwed that up? I know, seriously, it was a it was a funny ass moment, didn't it? That, like, that, wow, that, sounds, that, really that sounds like a John Laronitis mistake. Who's not bring that who? 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 Yeah, there you go. Who's that? Who? Um, there you go. <laughs> moving on, let's jump over to a little bit of AW real fast. Um, so I love, I love talking to Sal during Dynamite sometimes. I really do. He really is the Joey to my Chandler at times because when, 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 remember, I remember when CM Punk was going to debut at AW and they were teasing it like crazy on the television show. They're going to be in Chicago with the United Center and they're wearing literally like, CM related merchandise on the show and like Kenny Omega's wearing a cookie monster shirt. And Sal didn't still did not realize that it was all leading to CM Punk debuting on the show. Like, it did not dawn on him. That was the whole point. So they announced on Wednesday that they're going to be doing a show at the um at the TD at the TD Gardens in Boston. Fine. Uh-huh. That's a great announcement. Well, I look at Mandy, I'm like, well, that means Mercedes is gonna be there. 
immediately. Mercedes Monet's gonna be at the show. Like it dawned on me infinitely. I didn't even see the graphic. I didn't even see the boss with the dollar sign on the screen. I didn't see any of that. I just said Austin Mercedes Monet. She's gonna be on the show. It took literally seven minutes for Sal to realize on the screen it said Boston with dollar sign. It took him literally two seven asses. Minutes. Yeah, two dollar signs on it. It literally took him seven minutes for him to text me back. Oh, <laughs> Mercedes! <laughs> <laughs> you mean like, listen, listen. I wasn't. I remember, I my whole life, my whole like, life. I'm not that quick. Okay, it takes me a little bit. I've been dropped on my head a few times. Okay? Was, I, 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 I joke all the time that you were literally the Joey to my trailer because that was a Joey Shibiati moment. That was hysterical. <laughs> you mean dollar signs like cash I used to have? Yes, it was so funny. I cracked up laughing at that. So that being said. <laughs> Mercedes is going to be on um, AW television at AW Big Business. What a terrible name for a show, but whatever. That's happening. But at least it's a Dynamite episode, not like a big special. At least it's on Dynamite. Um, Any thoughts? Because I'm kind of mixed. I, I care, but I don't care. I'm um, more interested in what's going on with Okada. I don't think it's necessary to give her an entire themed show. That's just me. I'm sorry. I, I, and it, you could even someone throw out a theory that maybe this will also be the night that Okada debuts because apparently Okada is going to AW and that could be another money scheme because of the Rainmaker and then yeah. Okada Bucks and everything else. Oh. And that on the same Still show. Yeah, but I'll, be, I'll be more excited to see Okada than I want to see the Mercedes. I'm not going to bullshit you. <laughs> I just had a thought. Go for it. What if we're all wrong? What if we're all wrong and it's the debut of the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase? Christ. <laughs> Or, 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 or Ron Strowman goes to AEW. Still Isn't he hurt? He's still under contract and he's injured. <laughs> he's his contract totally had hold because he's hurt. <laughs> I thought he was uh I thought he healed. No, oh, he but he healed but he would have been in the rumble if he healed. You know they would have wanted Braun Strowman in the Royal Rumble if they were able to have him in the Rumble. You know that. <laughs> So that's happening. We'll talk about that more when we get close. I think it's actually the, I think that that episode is like the show that we'd be able to talk about when we come back from our little break. I think that's mm-hmm. going to be fun for us. Yep. By the way, I was going to make a joke that I know collision sometimes feels like thunder, but this is not WCW in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hard to tell them apart at times. Uh, sorry, just trust me, collision is a weird show for some weeks. It really is. And I don't understand this whole CMLL thing. Just throwing it out there. I don't understand what's going on with that. Um, it's it's a slight what? invasion. The whole um, the, the whole boom. Uh, well, the funny part is they do this whole um BCC CMLA f- CMLA oh. right. They do this whole thing on Dynamite instead of a match on Collision, right? And on Collision right. they move on. BCC is now feuding with FTR. <laughs> <laughs> you moved on. As you do, and then and then we'll, and then and we'll get the Dynamite. Well, no, 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 it's something we're getting BCC versus FTR at Revolution. Which is a great match on paper. I'm not gonna lie. But Claudio and Box versus B versus FTR. That sounds like a great match. <laughs> I'd love to see it. But like they moved on quickly from the CMLL weirdness that was going on. <laughs> um, so a couple of quick title changes that we love to do title change conversations. We don't have a lot of them. We don't do a lot of title changes anymore. So it's actually nice when we do. But ironically, we're attacking titles on both fronts. On Dynamite this week, one of the most obvious title changes you could possibly predict it ever. Um, <laughs> Sting and Darby no. Allen beat Ricky Starks and Big Bill to win the AEW hey. Tag Team Championships. And it is um, Sting's official 25th championship in his career. His sons were in the crowd. It was a really cool moment to watch. And then the Unbucked Attack. Um, and they beat the shit out of both of them, and all four of them, really, and setting up a match at Revolution for Sting's last match. Of Sting and um, Darby versus the Young Bucks. So let me, I'm going to say, I'm going to stop here. Dad is going to be doing the preview show for Revolution. I'm very neutral when it comes to Sting's retirement. I don't have the personal history that you two have. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to live, go to Sal on this because he will not be here for the Revolution show. And by the time we come back and talk, it'll be after the retirement match. What are your thoughts on Sting's final match being against the Bucks? And just overall, that we have Sting's final match actively happening, Sal. I still have my <laughs> WCW Sting action figure that I bought. That included like over twenty years ago. Well, there you go with, with his big gold belt. Um, 
I'm not thrilled that it's against the young bucks. I want to be honest with you. I'm not thrilled. Um, on the other side of it, things an old school guy. They always like to do, you know, their last match against, you know, an up and comer or somebody younger, blah, 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 blah. That's why I, as, as well as other people, we were assuming it was just going to be a friendly match between him and Darby Allen. Kind of makes sense. They've been together pretty much most of his run over there. Um, but I am happy that they won the titles because, like I mentioned on a previous show, they're undefeated as a tag team. I mean, he's undefeated total. So, I mean, it would have made sense for them to get a tag team title shot because they never had one before. Um, but I was hoping that a match would have been at the pay-per-view. And like I said, they would have won. He would have ended his career as tag team champion at AEW. And then either A, they drop the titles, or B, he finds another partner or whatever. Um, I'm hoping that that's still going to happen. Because I'm afraid now that they moved that tag team title match up just for them to defend the title now against the Young Bucks makes me a little worried. But I'm hoping that the Young Bucks are not selfish enough to want to win the title and give Sting his first loss at his last match. The only thing I'll say there it is Sting's decision. And Tony kind of made it very clear that Sting can do what he wants in this match. So, but he's old school too, and usually they lose their last match. Exactly. So I'm, like I'm very curious how this is going to go. I'm very curious how it's going to go. So I just really want to south south and kind of how much of a stink fan you are. Um, so there you go. And I guess I said that'll be here to preview that in a couple of weeks with John. Full detail on that in a couple of weeks. You know, Sal's idea is not too far off the beaten path. My thing is, you know, you think he would do something and pass the torch on to Darby, like you know like others have done in in the past where you well, got someone he, that's... He passed, a, he passed a, 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 a a literal or not literal torch to Darby. He might try to light himself on fire while jumping off of a jumping off something with it. So <laughs> my my thing is <laughs> if and, and being a fan of what is for the last match first thing was I'd like to see would be him against Adam Copeland. Eh, yeah. Meh. Yeah. Man, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna bullshit you. I am enjoying the Cope Open that's going on on Collision right now. Yeah, Adam Copeland is defending I mean, he's wrestling people who normally wouldn't wrestle. So I'm actually am enjoying that. Yeah, I could have done the with the weird like Suzuki couple match because that was weird. But like other than that, like they're doing an Eddie Garcia Adam Copeland match on Wednesday. Like that to me is intriguing. Yeah, like that's really intriguing to me. Like that, I don't know who's gonna win that, and I like it. I mean, that's interesting to me. But like, I like I prefer that Adam Copeland. Or he's actually wrestling all the people. I, I'm not looking forward to him against Christian again, but like I understand they had that little feud going on. But like I'm liking everything else they're doing with Copeland. Having him face younger guys against people you don't know. So like I appreciate that more than him facing Sting in a angry in a retirement match for no reason. Just old people old men just wrestling each other. And also keep in mind that you got Will Osprey waiting in the wings. Yes, he'll be debuting soon. So that's a big deal. Like um the other big channel change actually happened at NXT this past week. And I'm not going to bullshit you. I, if you told me a month or so ago when the Dusty, Dusty, the Dusty was starting, that this would have happened, and I would be excited and happy about it, I would never believe you. On any level, I would never have believed you. So, um, on NXT this week, we had um, around the weirdness of the bizarre because Booker T is off for a few weeks. Because apparently, he has some surgery. He's off for a few weeks. So Byron Sackins in Booker's spot right now, mm -hmm. and so we don't want Booker T on the commentary. So besides that weirdness, and then the whole Chase U storyline was calendar was selling calendars and bringing back the university storyline. That was weird. And then you have this whole like mob thing going on, and you have all this weird stuff going on. And you have um Dijak being Dijak and beating people up for no reason. And you have Joe Gacy who's trying to be mankind, apparently a combination of mankind and Bray Wyatt, where he's like what? weird, but he's no selling pain. Like it's a weird thing going on there. Oh no, um, it, it's bizarre. And his entrance is literally the, upside down this week. It was weird. And in the straight jacket. So they put him in a straight jacket. Maybe I'm having a straight jacket match at the, at the XPLE. Like, I, it's well weird that's going on. 
But around all that weirdness, you know, the dusty going on, and the tag team division is red hot right now. But what I did not expect was the Wolf Dogs. And we talked about them on our last show, and it was Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker, and I picked them to win the Dusty because I was really enjoying them, and I never thought I'd hear that they were enjoying something with Baron Corbin. Really, really enjoying them, and Baron Corbin's having the time of his life. And um, even though he's against the Wolf Dog name, which makes it even more charming. And we have this whole thing, and it's Wolf Dogs versus the family on NXT television. And I looked at Mandy, I'm like, there's no way. There's no <laughs> way they're going to put the belt on the Wolf Dog. As much as I would love to see it, I don't see it happening. So we started NXT late this week because of, uh, because of podcasting and the Mandy wanted to finish her workout. And I wanted to watch a little bit of the Devil's Game. We watched it. We were watching NXT in a bit of a delay. And then we were getting really tired by the main event. And Mandy's like, I'm going to go find out the result of this match so we can go to bed. <laughs> With the Twitter. And the first graphic she sees <laughs> is that the War Dogs won the tag team champ. The Wolf Dogs won the tag team championships. And I looked at them like, no fucking way they actually won. Then we fast forward to the end of the match. <laughs> and we get to the end of the match. And um Baron Corbin hits the um hits the end of days. And it was followed up by a spear from Braun Breaker. And the crowd is so into this match. They're going absolutely fucking crazy. One, two, three. The crowd's on their feet. They're being treated like fucking heroes winning a championship. <laughs> they want as clean as possibly be. And Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker are the tag team champions in NXT, and I see absolutely no problem with this whatsoever. <laughs> it's so bizarre. <laughs> wow, that happened. Now, keep in mind that Ron also has to make a decision, either SmackDown or Raw. Yeah, he got called up at the Rumble, and they're they're actually battling over who what roster he's going to be on. So, <laughs> I mean, if you look at that for what it is, how long do you think these guys are gonna hang on to the belts? Probably the PLA. Probably guess that's the end of the lever. Probably the end of the lever. It'll be completely and, and what, it, the, the belts go back on the Creed brothers? Or the, or the Creed brothers are all the main roster. The family is the one who had the belts. Um right. I, don't know, I don't know what I honestly don't know what to do in this situation. I honestly don't know what to do. Yes. I think put them back on Chase you, but that's just my personal opinion. But um I, yeah that'd be great because my thing is I think the next probably the to get called up would be the family, Tony Angela and Stax. I think that would be the next call up. I don't know. I don't know. I, well, they have Rizzo now, and I really enjoy Rizzo. So, oh, she, she's great. So, but by the way, Sal, if you ever want to see the most stereotypical Italian female character, and then the laugh realize that that's every female, that's every Italian female from New Jersey. Look at um, look at Rizzo <laughs> as now with the family. Riz is literally the most stereotypical Jersey Italian I've ever seen. <laughs> and I look at me and I'm like, that's exactly how it is in Jersey. That's exactly how it is. <laughs> the, only thing, the only thing missing from Rizzo is she hasn't flipped the table yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's, she, she is. I, I really am enjoying that. So that's that. Um, moving on. One last big topic. This happened. I'm not really sure what to make of it, but I do want to bring it up because it might be important. It might be really, really important at the end of this year. Mm-hmm. A new sports streaming add-on is coming to, in September. Well, um, with, the sta- with all the stations from, the, from yep, and Warner Brothers Discovery, ESPN, and Fox, it'll be an attachment to your basic plan. Like if you have ESPN Plus and Hulu, it'll be an attachment to that as an example. Or if you have um, BR Sports through um, Max, it'll be an attachment to that. That's how it sounds like it's going to be. Um, it'll have these stations of ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN+, Plus, ESPNU, ESPN News, Fox, FS1, FS2. I forgot there was an FS2 in existence. I'm not going to lie. Yes. Um, <laughs> TBS, True TV, which I think is hysterical. True TV airs basketball games all the time. Um, SEC, the SEC Network, ACC Network, and the Big Ten Network. This on top of what's going on in New York right now with a bunch of local streaming services coming together under one banner. I have a feeling that we're going to be doing this a lot all over the place. Sal, you would have actually brought this to my attention to begin with. Um, thoughts? Um, it's intriguing. It's intriguing, but I'm I'm curious to see. I like I could see it working, but my question is, how is it going to work within the parent companies? I know. Because now they're they're co-owning it. So obviously 
Disney ABC is going to want to do one thing while Warner Brothers Discovery is going to want to do something else. And how are they going to work that out? And I, that's a great question. I like, I would love to know, like, how is the, how like the NHL package is going to be? Everybody, like, as an NHL person that doesn't have the local station down here, and I want to rely on ESPN Plus mm-hmm. to watch all my Devils hockey, or T, if I may be able to watch the TNT games on the same app as I watch ESPN, that would be great. I mean, jump over to right. TNT games or it was the stadium here is on ABC. It'll be over there. Like that's the kind of stuff I'm wondering, like how that's going to work. And then of course you have the initial network issues that there's games over there exclusively. Like I'm curious how that's going to work. Um, Dad, your thoughts? My thing is with all these companies under one umbrella, so to speak. Does this mean that there may be some downsizing and some executives will be let go or released because it's kind of like doing double work. I mean, I, I don't, just... I don't know. And from what I understand, it's not one company. It's the companies working together under one service. If that makes sense. I, That's how it's explained to me. Right. In, in, in theory, you could see that, but in reality, I, I think there's going to be issues and conflicts. And, and that's just because I think you're going to have too many chiefs and not enough uh, workers. And that's the whole thing. We got too many chiefs. They figured that they know what is good for their company. Well, here it is. It's not just about what's good for your company, but the other people that are under this umbrella as well. So there's going to be conflicts, and hopefully they can get all these things rectified before. September. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before it, it doesn't happen right. or it falls apart. Because so... now with streaming getting so strong and the companies – like Spectrum, that all their new subscribers, they're not going on cable boxes anymore. They're going for a streaming box, streaming service. So that's got to tell you that traditional cable is kind of like on the way out. And it's streaming not on the way out. Way it out. is on the way out. It's not about right. to be on the way out. I mean, so, to and and we now the, the, the new I, mean, hey, wicked, I, remember we, I remember we talked about this when we cut the cord in this house because you were really yeah. hanging on the cord. I yeah. trying to tell you money reasons, this, that, and the other thing. And you know, obviously, like you. What did we lose? A couple of stations and save the shitload of money? Like at the end of the day, like what did yeah. we lose? Because now the other part of this is the FCC wants to basically treat streaming like cable so where they can regulate it and increase prices on some of the, the subscriptions, which I think is just totally ludicrous. If the FCC I, 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 I don't know, I don't know all bit about that. Yeah. Oh, so oh, I mean Mark it, is it, going off on a tangent. There you go. <laughs> I mean, let's leave well enough alone. I can sell every time. I want to sell every single time. <laughs> right, on that note, let's wrap up. We're actually hitting about an hour and a half here, so let's hit, the, let's hit this. Okay. We're going to close this with a deep cut, favorite of mine, that I've been putting all over my social medias. It is um Shaggy. The song is Hope, and uh, it's, a, it's a deep cut favorite of mine. So we're going to play this and play that out. So Sal, take us out of here. Go. Yeah, for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube, uh, go to our website, theblakeofstyleshow.com, and please, please, please don't forget, comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. Don't forget, go on Spotify and comment, and we'll read those on the air as well, and vote in polls and stuff like that we're putting up on there. So please don't do that. Um, Dad, go ahead. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure, and thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, every you know all the support that we're getting, and just you know, leave a comment, positive, negative, or whatever. Just let us know that you're out there and we're reaching you in some way, shape, or form. And if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live at, please patronize these people. These are the companies that are training the young men and women in the world of professional wrestling, sports entertainment. To them to basically polish up and and on their character, their gimmick, their finishers, their promo, the whole ball of wax, get to that brass ring to get into a major wrestling organization. So they can't do without you. So please patronize these people. Just do it responsibly. All right. Um, one more time tomorrow. If you're at the stadium series in at, at Life Stadium, me and Sal will be at in, in lot M two over by the Let's Go Devils um podcast stage hanging out and having some, having some drinks and having a good time. So come join us over there and have some fun and find us. I've had a lot of fun. Um, next week, we'll do the live show from the stadium series. Again, don't know how that's going to work, but it's going to be fun to look back. 
Um, and the week after will be Nark and um John previewing AEW Revolution. Boy, you guys in trouble. Same being said, <laughs> um, I want to ask real fast thanks all these people, all our friends, all my friends out there for the support and all the love I've been getting off the air. Like all the people that are reaching out to me, thank you so much, everybody. I love. I I, I I you make a, a guy feel loved in a bad situation. Like I hear that. Thank you all for that. Um, let's get out of here. I'm Blake. I'm Sal. I'm Mark. And you were listening to the Blake and Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, I got one more for the soundboard. Fuck cancer. Indeed. See ya. Love you guys. And the smoke that keeps me holding on. And the smoke that makes me carry on. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Bye bye, bitch. Ha <laughs> ha.